So I'm going to show you how I do my faux lock installation today. These are the faux locks that I'm going to be installing. They are number four and 27 blend for color. That's a dark brown and a uh, reddish strawberry blonde. So let's get started. So I'm getting ready to install dreadlocks. These are faux locks, obviously. Um, since my hair is not dreaded and my hair is too fine and thin to really make great dreadlocks. So I'm going to be installing goddess locks, which are defined by the little curly hair kind of at the end. And these have a loop at the top. They can be installed um, on cornrows, like as crochet braids or faux locks, or you can um, install them individually and I'm going to show how I do it on my own hair because I do it differently on my hair than I do it on um, hair that is thicker or more curly or whatever so my hair is just um, very like fine like each hair is just very thin and so there are just different methods for installing something like a faux lock so it will hold without breaking the breaking my hair um, but also will look natural also just a side note it's super late at night so forgive all the you know imperfections and everything <laughs> but we're just going to do this so what i did is um, first step is i actually colored my hair um, with a number four a permanent color but I didn't I didn't overuse it so it's I mean I didn't leave it on super long so it's still got a little bit of some of the um, red or blonde tones showing through um, and my hair was in braids all day so it's kind of a little bit wavy and fluffy right now but anyway um, I colored my hair so that it would match really well with this because my hair is actually going to be braided around and then um, braided with some number four hair. So you're gonna need some braid hair, the faux locks, and your hair to all kind of match. Um, of course, I'm going to be using the Black Panther Strong um, Edge Control for just reinforcing some of the um, braid hair as well as my hair around the dread just to, to get it to really grab. Um, in addition to this, I'm going to seal the braid hair around the dreadlock with a wet washcloth. I'm just gonna like singe it with the kind of uh, to steam it with this. So you're gonna need a small-ish flat iron as well as some kind of either edge wax or edge control. I prefer this to anything like a Burt's Bees chapstick or anything that has is a little bit more oily. You can use that for braids if you're making really small braids, but for this, since it's wrapped, you need something that has a little bit more sticky quality to it um, that's gonna like get those hairs to really stick together. Before you get going too crazy, um, I like to do just a sample one kind of right in front of my ear here at the temple just because it's an easy place to see and you can kind of practice on these one in this area and in this area um, if you're new at it you can practice there so go ahead and get a little bit of the Black Panther Strong edge control you're just going to kind of um, massage that into your roots and just prepare that little section of hair. And you can also use a little bit of it to just kind of sweep the hair away because you don't want little um, hairs crossing over the dread parts. So this is just gonna be one section and I do these sections a little bit bigger than I do for braids just because the diameter of a faux lock is going to be wider than the diameter of um, 
the box braids that I do when I do the small ones. So then you're going to just go ahead and open up the loop in that faux lock and slide it onto that section of hair. So I'll show you one more time. So you just take the faux lock at the top. It's going to have a loop and you are going to just find the center of that loop and kind of put um, your thumb and forefinger in there and just pull that over. So now you have these two pieces. Now you're going to add to that a small piece of braid hair. Okay, so holding that, you're going to um, use one of those strands as a third section for your braid. And the other one, um, you're just gonna use the, your own hair. I actually put it in my mouth sometimes just so I, so I can keep it out of the way. So you're gonna basically do a braid with um, one strand of the braid is your hair, one strand is the braid hair, and one strand is the faux lock. And if, um, if you want, you can actually clip that little piece of braid hair off to the side as well. So this method basically um, ensures that you don't have to use the rubber bands. I don't like rubber bands on my hair. Some people like them. I think they look good on guys, faux locks. I think that they can also work if your hair is um, like a one or one B color. Um, if your hair really, really matches basically the rubber band, I think that can work. So I'm going to braid about to there and you can see that that's um, nice and tight and then I'm going to just take this strand that it was left out and I'm going to use it for wrapping and you can kind of see um, what I'm doing here and I always use a clockwise direction even though some people use counterclockwise, it's fine, it doesn't really matter, just as long as you kind of keep track so that when you're undoing your faux locks, you know which way to unravel the hair. So you can also switch off, basically just do a tuck and then switch to the other strand. And just keep going all the way down um, the faux lock until basically you run out of hair. Now you can use a little bit less hair. I probably don't need quite um, as much hair as I have here. But you want to make sure that you can kind of like push it up a little bit and that it's looking really nice and natural. And then when I get to just a little bit of length there at the ends, I'm gonna kinda twist both of the ends together and then just incorporate it down the dread. Okay, so that all blends in nicely and I have kind of a little bit of an ombre because the number four um, just goes kind of right into that 4 and 27 blend of a faux lock. So now the fun part, <laughs> sealing it. Because if you let go of this, it's just going to uncurl. So to seal it, I use a flat iron and a wet washcloth. So I'm going to get my wet washcloth on okay. there. So I've got my washcloth here and it's wet. It's not dripping wet, but if you squeeze it, you can see that there's water in it. So you want to basically Get a washcloth wet and then squeeze most of the water out. And I just kind of put it right up over top of the faux lock and then seal it by just squeezing the flat iron. 
all the way down from about the middle of where you've um, twisted that that braid hair around basically you're sealing the braid hair more than anything because you don't want that braid hair to unravel from the middle all the way down to the end of where the braid hair is this is basically just accomplishing the same thing that dipping um, a braid in hot water will accomplish it actually kind of like went a little bit too far but it's okay um so yeah that just helps it to stay and that will never come undone it's it's permanent so what you're gonna have to do to undo these is to find that little end of braid hair grab it and force it to unravel but for now and i'm just gonna snip there are a few little tiny you can kind of see like some little tiny pieces of the braid hair those little tiny ends because i'm a perfectionist plus i know like everybody's judging me like times 10 on my hair so i have to you know step it up pressure's on for it to be pretty much perfect so yeah, that's, that's how I do a faux lock. And a lot of times I'll actually make my own faux locks. These I actually bought on Amazon. And they look really cute. So I wanted to try them. They're wavy. And then they have the, the ends out. So, but the advantage to making your own is that you can actually control the length and the width and the colors and um, so a lot of times my kind of signature faux locks used to be past my butt to my knees essentially I really like the like super long blonde faux locks in the summer um, as kind of like a unique look so the other thing that you could do is you could if you wanted to be um, if you didn't want that like ombre root look for the color you could actually just um do a blend of the braid hair with a a four and a um 27 you know so that it's exactly the same as the faux lock but anyway this looks pretty good and that is block number one and you can kind of see you know it's tight but it's not going to be pulling any hairs out this is the braid hair i'm cutting right there um, so yeah, that's how I do a full lock individual install method. And then once you do all these, um, they hurt less than braids. So you can put them up right away. Like the next day you can pull them up into a bun or ponytail or half up, half down, a little top knot. So it's super versatile and you can, um, also do some things with those little curls being at the bottom. These are very short. These are the shortest faux locks I've ever tried, but I want to try them shorter because Langston is constantly pulling on my hair and I just feel like it, I, just as a mom of a toddler right now, I need to have shorter hair. So, I mean, it's just easy. So here's day two of the faux locks. Um, I have I don't know, three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21. About 25, so a couple dozen on this side. And you can kind of see the top here, how that looks. And I still have this whole side to do and the back. So they don't, necessarily take um a whole bunch of days in a row if you do, you can just do them all in one day but i happen to have this little guy who is always wanting attention and that's just my life so i kind of divide my own hair into um just a few hours at a time and then come back the next day and do some more and so on and so forth. So I just kind of wanted to show you where this is at now. And again, the top. 
So you can kind of get an idea of how they are laying. And I will get the rest of this done. And meanwhile, what I do is I actually just pull these around and kind of twist. So I'm kind of like wrapping it into, um, and you can either clip it or whatever, and then just wrap it at night with a um, head wrap. And that will just keep them, you know, kind of separated from the hair that you haven't done and just kind of put it on pause while you get ready to come back the next day. So when you get to the back of your faux locks, you want to just section off a little um, section of hair. You're going to continue doing the same process, opening up the faux lock, kind of slipping it over. It's a little bit harder to get to keep this hair um, from going inside of it because you want to keep that in three pieces. But if you hold it with your mouth, even just for the beginning of the braid that you're doing, it will help. And this is my natural hair that I'm wrapping around the faux lock. So yeah, it's exciting when you get to the back because you're almost done, but it also is the most challenging spot to do. The back and kind of like the top of your head are both kind of hard to do when you're doing your own hair. Honestly, it's like that's the easiest part to do on somebody else, but so yeah, and then you're gonna still, you can just kind of feel it um, back there as you wrap it. You just kind of have to hold this um, hair as you wrap it around with your finger, with your index finger. And you put a little bit of um, the edge control on that hair. We're just going to wrap it all the way to that little teeny tiny end. And you're still doing the same process of sealing with the wet washcloth, and you can see it steam. Well, you can hear it steam anyway. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the steam or not very well, but it's there. And you want to, you're just holding it right underneath all the way to that end so that you make sure that it gets all the way to that end part. And then sometimes like this will happen the faux lock will kind of untwist a little bit just from doing that and you can just twist it down and basically bring that little bit of hair just kind of work it down to the end so yeah and that is one of the back ones and then i just put them in this clip this is just loosely clipped and then get the next section you can kind of feel it and also you can use a mirror if you want to like turn around and look at the back of your um, hair to kind of like use the mirror to find like the next section okay so let's do one on this side just to switch it up I'm right-handed, but if you're a braider, you gotta be able to, especially if you're doing your own hair, you gotta be able to switch sides easily. So again, open the loop, grab your hair, 
pull it through till it's tight. And if you don't want to put the hair in your mouth, you can kind of put it around that little clip. I know, because somebody's going to be like, oh, that's gross to put in your mouth. Well, I mean, it's clean hair. It's just braid hair. But I think it's harder to get it to, like, stay on that clip, which is why I usually just put it in my mouth. But anyways, whatever works for you. And then make sure that you're just keeping that tight against the scalp as you do the anchor braid a few inches two or two or so inches down then you're going to wrap your natural hair around if your hair is shorter it will be even better because you don't have to wrap as much of it let's see this thing is just Irritating. Gets caught up in the way if you don't put it somewhere. Of course, if you're doing this on a client's hair, you can just clip it up, but it's just, it's hard to clip it and hold it and do all that stuff when you're doing your own. So, gotta do what works. And then I'm just wrapping that hair that I was holding. And again, you're going to hold it with your index finger as you wrap it around. All the way down. And then make a tiny little braid, like one or two small rotations before you switch off to the other hair. Grab a little bit of product. And we are gonna seal it. So, you know, pretty easy. And there aren't as many of these as, like I do larger sections with faux locks than I do for my actual box braids. So there aren't as many of these to do as box braids, which is why these take way less time and you can easily just knock them out in one day. I mean, in probably four to five hours if you have un uninterrupted time. <laughs> but I just do, a few, you know, like an hour here and there in between other clients and my kiddos and all that stuff, cooking, cleaning, and artwork, and life. So, and then just put that in your clip. So that row is done, and then what I usually do is just undo my, my little top knot here, and then get another row of natural hair out so that Look at my arms. I mean, they're strong, but but flabby too. <laughs> that's that's what middle aged life is like. <laughs> You're like strong but fat. All right, so yeah, and then you're just gonna like feel the back and get your comb out, and you can kind of see a little bit from the side to just part across to get a new section of hair and then after you do that put your hair back up in a little top knot and continue until you get all of this hair locked up so these are the finished faux locks and you can see they are nice and full um, and you can wear them down like this or you can wear them up in a ponytail or a top knot. I'll show you a couple different ways that I like to wear them. 
So super fun, super easy, very cool, very low maintenance hairstyle for the summer. So these are just the faux locks all the way down and you can see how the dreadlocks kind of end in that little curl for the goddess locks. And this is up in a ponytail. And again, the curls kind of come to your shoulder. You can also put in a high ponytail and just leave the curls kind of down almost like a um, faux hawk. And then sometimes you can just have them like frame your face or put them all in a bun. And that's kind of an elegant style that I like to wear a lot just to keep it completely out of my face. So, so this is just a great mom hairstyle. Happy faux locking.